feel like the Democratic Party has done much for black people in the oh, last no. couple of years? <laughs> <laughs> hey, taking us down through there, it's about it, taking all our shit. Like the rest of them, they ain't gonna do nothing for them. Has Biden and generally the Democratic Party, have they fulfilled promises that they've made over the last couple of years? To me, in a small town like this, it, 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 it really doesn't matter who you have in office. The effect that we experience is the same. It don't matter if it's Biden, it don't matter if it's Trump, it don't matter if it's Obama or Clinton or Bush, it really doesn't matter. What we feel down here is exactly the same. You know, they can never even tell us who the president is and we really still going to be exactly the same. All right, guys. So I stumbled across this interesting clip featuring Marx's crybaby, uh, Van Jones, who cried tears of joy when Joe Biden was elected president. Mm -hmm. In this country, you, you, you don't have to worry if the president doesn't want you here. If you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry if the president's going to be happier to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers back for no reason. This is vindication for a lot of people who have really suffered. You know, the, the, I can't breathe. You know, that wasn't just George Flo Floyd. That was a lot of people that felt that they couldn't breathe. <laughs> oh, my God. This Negro. Bruh, that, that clip never, ever, ever gets old, okay? <laughs> that is one of the most pathetic things I've ever seen on TV. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now, when Van Jones uh, is not doing conscious co-parenting, a.k.a. woke parenting, uh, which means having kids by your friends, right? Even though you're not married to him, you're not in a relationship with him, just having kids by your friends just because, right? Which is something that he did and told the world about it. Um, when he's not doing that, apparently he's still doing some political commentary, okay? He came out here and uh, gave his opinion on CNN about Joe Biden allegedly uh losing support among black voters so van jones is basically going to make the argument here that black voters uh may be leaving the democrat party because of joe biden's failures and i want to break down this clip of him talking about this because i think that he makes some interesting points but at the same time i really kind of don't like doing these breakdowns because he comes at it from a progressive perspective um which again is you know interesting but at the same time i i think he just has the wrong solutions to the problems but regardless of that i i want to uh comment on what he's saying because i think what he's saying is interesting but before i get in that i just want to let you guys know if you like my channel you want to support my channel you can do so using the links in the description below you can support the patreon you can support the paypal you can support the merch there are multiple ways to support the channel if you would like to do so so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this clip. Van Jones. Hey, man. Nice to see you. You see you as well. I think Harry used like, what, four or five bigs in terms of how <laughs> he was trying to describe the drop in approval among yeah. black voters. Yeah. What do you see happening here? Well, I think that there's a disappointment uh, factor that's that set in. Um, I think uh, a lot of black voters feel like the, the black community gave the most uh, during the election. It was a historic election 2020 and have gotten the least. If you look at voting rights, so far, nothing. Police reform, so far, nothing. Uh, you look at some of the student loan stuff, very little. Yeah, so again, this is what I don't like about these conversations because he's right that black voters allegedly gave the most. I mean, according to the left, if you listen to them, black women say the republic, right? They say democracy, right? Black women say democracy. Um, but in exchange for saving democracy, what do black people got, right? They got a um, Supreme Court nominee, Okay, um, which, I mean, is that really doing anything for black folks? Yeah, I don't know. Got a holiday, right? But what else have you got? That's it. I mean, that's basically it. <laughs> but uh, with that being said, what Van Jones is talking about here, he's talking about voting rights. Well, voting rights is not a real issue, right? There are no black people that are being killed from voting. It is a conspiracy by the Democrat Party that Van Jones has bought into and the Democrats basically telling black people that we're doing something for you by making it easier for you to vote for us. That's not doing anything for black people because after you follow up the whole voting rights thing, the question is, okay, well, what are Democrats actually going to do? And they never do anything, right? You got Democrats running the House, they run the Senate, they got the White House. They still haven't done anything, okay? Um, so I don't understand the whole voting rights thing. He talks about uh, police reform. And in my humble opinion, 
uh, police reform is not even a top 10 issue in the black community. Okay, you see how all the police stuff has died down. Okay, <laughs> all of a sudden, no more unarmed black people being unjustly killed by cops anymore. Now, there have been some situations that they've tried, right? They've tried to make uh, new George Floyd like situations happen, but it just hasn't worked because uh, most people aren't falling for the tricks anymore. So they haven't been able to do that. Um, again, it wasn't even a real issue in the first place. And the Democrats uh, could have got it done if they just chose to work with Tim Scott and to just settle on having uh, conservative police reform, which I think is fair. But no, the Democrats actually want radical police reform in which they want a low key move towards federalizing policing. And Republicans are not going to get on board with that. The Democrats could pass police reform if they were actually willing to uh, meet the Republicans in the middle on this, but they're just simply not. And that's why it hasn't been done. Okay. Now, when it comes to student loan stuff, again, listen, man, in principle, I just disagree with student loan debt forgiveness. You took out a loan, uh, you should pay it back. It's really that simple, right? So again, those things are not anything that I think are major issues for black people. If uh, Biden was doing things for black people, what he really needs to do is focus on cleaning up crime, okay, getting rid of these uh, progressive prosecutors and DAs that, again, letting these criminals terrorize black communities and figure out ways to incentivize private investment in uh, some of these communities in order to help spur job creation and economic opportunity or focusing on schools, doing what Ron DeSantis and the Florida Republicans are doing, right? The so-called white supremacists, promoting financial literacy, okay? Figuring out how to help students get skills, job skills uh, in high school so that they don't necessarily need to go to college and take out all these loans and get in all these debt just to get a mediocre job with a mediocre salary. Those are the things that the Democrats and the Biden administration should be thinking about and trying to figure out if they actually really want to help black folks. But those are not the things they are focused on. What they want people to think are the issues in the black community is police and voting rights and student loans, right? That's what they want people to think the issues are in the black community. And that's just simply not true. It's all about financial literacy and economic opportunity. If you're not talking about those two things, you ain't talking about helping the black community, right? You're talking about helping the Democratic Party. What was motivating African-American voters uh, left, right, and otherwise were that some, somebody was going to come to our res rescue. The AKA Orange Man Bat, right? AKA Orange Man Bat. The day-to-day -day reality for black folks hasn't improved. In fact, you know, because of inflation and other things, gotten worse. And so you're starting to see that disappointment factor set in. Do you think it will change the voting patterns? Well, listen, I think, I think that it, it may well also. Hell no. I don't think it's going to change the voting patterns. I mean, we'll see. I'm just saying, I'm not one of these people that's going to get my hopes up. Uh, just because some polls are showing that Biden's losing black support because there's a difference between a hypothetical poll and actually voting, right? When people actually get in the voting booth, uh, black people tend to fall in line behind the Democrats no matter what. It doesn't matter what they do, if they fulfill any of their promises, it does not matter because of the racism boogeyman, right? And as long as that racism boogeyman is there, I don't see voting patterns changing that much. But that's not to say I'm not hoping that it won't change. It, I hope that it changed. I just won't really believe it until I see it, right? And the midterms will be an early indication of uh, whether or not this pattern will actually change. And if it starts to change during the midterms, then I think that maybe, just maybe, we will see during a presidential election it change as well, okay? But it starts with the midterms. Also, don't forget, you have had a concerted effort on the part of conservatives to recast the Republican Party as the party of the multiracial working class. Yeah, but more so than that, um, is just the Democrats just being so terrible, right? The Democrats are just so bad that they've been like, hey, you know what? These Republicans, you know, um, I don't necessarily know we really liked them all that much, but they can't be that much worse than the Democrats, okay? They can't be worse than the Democrats, right? I, I think that's kind of what a lot of people are saying, more so than the GOP actually doing a good job and, you know, pushing their message. I, I think it's more so the Democrat messaging and, and what they're doing is just, just so bad that it's pushing people away out of the party, right? Because if you don't agree with them 100%, you're a bigot, sexist, racist, right? And I think that is what is pushing a whole lot of people away. Republicans have moved right on cultural issues. We react to that. They move left on some economic issues. Now, that is true. They have moved uh, somewhat left on uh, some economic issues. I mean, let's not forget, I mean, <laughs> Republicans did support the stimulus packages uh, during Trump's last year, you know, in which, you know, at the time, 
some people could argue, hey, you know, we might have needed them because we artificially shut down the economy. And some people argue that we shouldn't have shut down the economy in the first place. But I'm just saying, they have become a little bit more left on some of these issues. I mean, they did agree uh, with Joe Biden to do the bipartisan infrastructure uh, package as well, too. So I think Van Jones does have a point in regards to Republicans moving a little bit more left on economics. But yeah, definitely when it comes to social stuff, the right ain't going woke on that. You see, uh, Republicans more open to, you know, a tariffs, more open to protecting American workers, that kind of stuff. Well, a lot of that is spurred by the fact that these companies are going woke as well, too. Right. When you start uh, disrespecting traditional American values and, you know, pushing an agenda on kids that's coming from corporate America. Uh, yeah, I think that a whole lot of conservatives are like, you know what? Maybe some of these corporations should start paying some more taxes. Right. Because if they're going to disrespect us and call us racist, sexist, bigots, then maybe they should pay some more taxes. I think that's what some of that is coming from as well, too. And so I think we underreact as Democrats to the left move of the econ on economics from Republicans, sometimes overreact to their move to the right on culture, and are missing a big, big chunk of folks who are moving away from us in the black community. The president's approval rating is down overall, not just among black voters here. True. What do you think is going on? There? Inflation. Inflation. I mean, listen, I mean, that's... Uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, ordinary folks, when they're, they're looking at uh, their bills and they're looking at gas prices when they're up, Republicans, uh, uh, not Republicans, presidents suffer. So that part of it is baked into the cake. But I think that when you have a community that feels that it rescued the Democratic Party, maybe rescued American democracy, and can't get police reform done after George Floyd, that there's something wrong and that disappointment factor started to show up. Did the Democrats overpromise? Overpromised, underdelivered so far. Well, they do that every single election, but black people still vote for them. And that's why I'm I'm not necessarily as hopeful that that's going to change. Now, what Van Jones said about inflation is right. I mean, at the end of the day, people do vote with their wallets. But will black people actually vote for their, with their wallets? I have no clue. But I know the rest of America probably will. I know the Hispanic community will. I know maybe Asian Americans will. But I don't necessarily know if black people are going to vote for their wallets. I, and I'm just saying this just based off past historical behaviors, right? Black people have been locked up with the Democrat Party no matter how bad the Democrat Party has been. Okay, so I don't have any real reason to believe that it's going to change. I'm sorry, right? But again, with that being said, yes, the reason why Biden's poll numbers among black people and the rest of America as well, too, has been so low is primarily because of inflation, Okay. It's very simple. If the economy is doing well around the time of the election, the general election, then typically the party in power will stay in power. If the economy is not doing well, then typically the party that's in power will not stay in power. No matter what else is going on, everything is about the money, right? Everything's about the money. How so? Well, again, th this idea, well, well, Trump was here. He's terrible. We're going to replace him and, and we're going to give you 100 percent of what you want with 50 percent of the votes in the Senate. The math never made sense. So you could pass these big bills through the House, but you can even sometimes get a hearing in the Senate. And so you begin over, the, by the time you get to the summertime, it's like, hey, I'm hearing all this good stuff supposed to be happening, but it's never getting signed by the president. And so when you overpromise so much in the beginning of the year and you're underdelivering at the end of the year, and don't forget, build back better, et cetera, you suddenly wind up with a disappointment factor plus inflation. Any way you can fix that? I, listen, I just think that there's some things that could get done. I think you could do something narrow on voting, you could probably still do something narrow on police reform or at least executive orders. You got to signal the people that the people that brought you, to, brought you to the dance, young people and black folks, are going to get something out, out of the government or people are not going to want to vote. Well, we'll see because, you know, Democrats seem to be signaling or Joe Biden seems to be signaling that he might, you know, make some moves on student loans, which is definitely <laughs> them buying votes. Right. We'll see what the Democrats do. In my opinion, again, if you're not talking about financial literacy, if you're not talking about trying to create economic activity, a uh, business-friendly environment in some of these communities, empowering entrepreneurs, if you're not talking about those type of things, then you really ain't talking about helping black America. Um, all that stuff that Van Jones is talking about with student loan debt and police reform and voting rights, that stuff is irrelevant in my opinion. But that doesn't change the fact that I think overall what he's saying in regards to why the Democrats are losing black America is true. I just don't think his solutions are um, the right solution. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.